a KQED television production. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna. Great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Available at nearby stores. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers available at walmartlabs.com. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Natural Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has over 250 types of natural stone choices in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, high school English teacher, Jesse McGrath, expounds upon literature, grammar, and composition, then unwinds by performing stand-up comedy. He professes a love of food and eats very well. That's no laughing matter. CEO, Chief Everything Officer, Tim McDonald, runs his own PR firm and loves to talk as much as he loves to eat and drink. He's always ready to spin a new culinary tale, wax poetic about wine, or craft a classic cocktail. But first, pediatrician Kavitha Rajaram spends long hours treating fevers, bumps, and bruises. So when it's time for a special night out, she heads to her fave spot, a quintessential example of downtown Oakland's Renaissance and Revival. It's on 19th Street in Oakland, and it's called Duende. In Spanish folklore, a duende is a naughty or nice little elf that lives in the woods. But Duende, the restaurant, is named after Garcia Lorca's discovery of the evocative spirit of creative expression as distinguished by the flamenco artists. My name is Paul Canales, and this is Duende. The idea of food at Duende was to be inspired by Spanish and Basque cooking. My father's heritage is Basque. But I did not want to do museum food, meaning food that's been done for ages and ages without any inspiration left in it. The core of the cooking is based in traditional recipes, but yet we're reinvigorating them through creative expression and improvisation. Paella is paella. It has to be made in a traditional paella pan. The core base of it is sofrito, and then the correct rice, so we do that. However, we then imbue it with what's happening currently in season and bring in a few naughty twists just to make it a little more interesting. Like our food, our cocktails are creative and interesting and created here. We don't buy a lot, we make most of what we're doing. The feel of Duende is fun, liveliness, and excitement. I want people to come in and feel the hug as if they're joining a party that's already started. And there's our paella. All right, Kavitha, how did you discover Duende? Well, actually, I was on a girls' night out with some doctor friends of mine, and we happened upon Duende. I think I saw you there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was amazing. You go through the, you know, the, there's like a curtain up over the door, and you walk in, and it's this dark, dim lighting. It's very industrial chic. There's like exposed brick walls, these amazing, um, you know, artwork and dark brooding colors. It's just a beautiful atmosphere, and it just makes you really excited about the whole evening and exci excited about the food and the drinks that you're it about to have. It used to be the old uh, Oakland Flower Mart. Oh really? Oh wow! Yeah, it looked like a architecturally a beautiful building, so right. I could I could see that. So the menu is um, 
is divided into tapas, which is like small plates that you can share, and then the um, raciones, which are like bigger dishes, and then the, finally the paella, which is the highlight. Yeah. So I usually try and have a couple of tapas and then have a big paella at the end, which is the way to go if you go to Duende. I really love the ensalada de col. So mm -hmm. it's, a, um, it's a salad prepared with savoy cabbage, and it's like chopped up very finely. It's put in with nuggets of pistachios and um, really good sliced olives and it's on top there's a really excellent mahon cheese which is a Spanish cheese um, and it has like a, a champagne vinaigrette so it's just it's an amazing dish and it really kind of starts the evening right with like a punch of flavors. Gets you kicked off. Yeah exactly. All right Tim what did you have when you started at Duende? We had a cocktail first right. and Patrick was really great. Uh, okay. has a very nice cocktail list. Uh, and they're really known, and that's why we're drinking cocktails on set here today during the show, because <laughs> um, in Spain, all the trend, all the rage is to drink huge gin and tonics, these big balloon glasses of gin and tonics. So we have a fabulous local gin, and uh, we're just giving you a little taste of Spain today. So that's right. You'll get gin and tonics at Duende as well. That's right, and I couldn't help but uh, 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 play around in the appetizer category. Mm -hmm. Quinos rellenos. Oh, to die for. I normally wouldn't order a relleno, but you know, when you're looking at all these clever things that are on the appetizer list, and it came and it was just perfectly not hot. Right. Just the right amount of cheese uh, was the perfect way to keep things going. And I, because I had some sherries right. in front of me, I just thought they, the combo were just brilliant. Mm -hmm. I had the, the croquettes, which I loved, and that's I had those a yep. lot when I was in Spain, and it's just, it's hard to beat fried cheese, you yeah. know? <laughs> and, uh, and I love that whole Spanish feel of like, you're having, it's not so much a meal as it is an experience. You are right. sitting there and you're having all of these drinks and you're having all of these appetizers and you're having this conversation, and they did that really well. Those were some of the best Brussels sprouts I think I've ever had. They were delicate. For me, I loved them. I thought they were a little bit crispy for me, a mm -hmm. little bit on the, had a little bit of that. I like the burn flavor, but it was it was a little bit too present for me. But just, I mean, if you're gonna put butter and lemon all over anything and then fry it up, I'm gonna eat it and it's gonna be delicious. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna love it. So the, the second course, you just have to have meatballs. Uh, the beef was a real high quality, just fall apart kind of meatballs with a lovely chili uh, sauce on it. I had this dish that was like a like a pureed lamb almost, mm -hmm. and it came mm -hmm. with bread and you spread it on there, and I did nothing I'd ever had before, and it had almost like the same taste as like a salami, right. mm -hmm. which is, was kind of strange at first, but then we got used to it and it was kind of amazing, this like spreadable salami that we were just putting on this really nice, soft, kind of squishy bread. Mm -hmm. um, and it was perfect, it was, it was lovely. Well, Chef also cures uh, his own jamon. So they've got jamon aging in the basement for years. <laughs> You've been chomping at the bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I really think it's, it should be illegal to leave Duende without trying the Rose Negro. It's amazing, it's the best I've ever had. So they, you know, starts with a, you know, a bomba rice, the Spanish traditional bomba rice that's perfectly cooked. It's not, it's tender, but you know, not mushy at all, like some peas that you get. And it's served with this beautiful blanket of squid ink that kind of adds this briny sea flavor to it that's amazing. And then they kind of top it off with fresh seafood, whatever's in season, whatever the chef can, you know, get. And so it's different each time you go. And so the time that I went, they had like an amazing rock um, fish that was kind of mild, but kind of lent to the, the sea flavors and the saltiness of everything. I had the one that had a um, rabbit in it. It was okay. rabbit and clams and it was delicious. Um, the, the rabbit was really tender. And I like the paella that has a little bit of the crisp mm -hmm. kind of on the, the bottom. The best uh, part. Yeah. Yes, it absolutely, you kind of have to fight over it a little right. bit at the table. But yeah, it was, it was excellent. The meat was really tender and the rice was cooked perfectly. I love paella, but I tried something I'd never tried before, which was the one made with the noodles. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And you know, it was good, but it was not your socks off. <laughs> right. We were all quite happy because we'd had a flight of uh, sherry and... Well, and they do, and that's the other drink that you have in the glass, as mm -hmm. we're, getting, uh, we're getting a little creative here, is, is a fino sherry, a dry mm -hmm. sherry. Right. So yeah. it's yeah. a fantastic wine with all sorts of pinchos or tapas and, and Spanish food. Yeah, this is the first place I've tried sherry before and it really goes well with the food there because the, the bright, bold flavors and the right. sherry is like really dry and kind of acidic and it just really melds together perfectly. And what about desserts? Uh, yeah, we had the, the highlight for me was this little white cake and it was served with little tangerines mm -hmm. um, and it was just, I mean, like nectar. I had an amazing cake that had reconstituted dried cherries on top of a spongy soft pound cake and it was so delicious and it was not too overly sweet so it was like the perfect end to the meal. I kind of went with the classic Sunday. 
You know, the chocolate sauce to me on a really decent ice cream is the perfect way to end a meal. And Paul's wife makes the ice cream. Right? As it turns out. All right, Kavitha, your spot, give us a quick summary. An industrial chic hideout in Oakland. Duende is the place to go for bold flavors and strong cocktails. All right, and Tim? A huge uh, go back place. Easy to get to, parking was easy, loved it a bunch, and we'll recommend it. All right, and Jesse? Great cocktails and excellent appetizers. Great place to start a night. All right, if you would like to try Duende, it's located on 19th Street at Telegraph in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-893-0174. It's open for dinner Wednesday through Monday with brunch on Sunday. Reservations are recommended. The average dinner tab without drinks is around $35. You'll always feel welcomed at Jesse's favorite beer and burger-centric hangout. Once a lackluster pizzeria, it's now a family-friendly gastropub located on Geneva Avenue in San Francisco's Excelsior District. So get ready for some pub grub at the Dark Horse Inn. <laughs> We opened this place because we wanted to find a place where we would be comfortable, the kind of place that we wanted to go to, where we could get good food, good beer, and a good environment. I'm Andrea Ferrucci, and this is the Dark Horse Inn. We've joked that every night is a block party at the bar because so many of the neighbors know each other or have met each other here. It's become a big family. My name is Sean Ingram. I'm the owner-operator of the Dark Horse Inn. Where's your flight of beers? We have eight taps. They're all different. There's an IPA, a pale ale, there's a dark beer, there's a, like a saison or a multi beer. There's always something for somebody. And wine, lots of wine. <laughs> the menu's changed over the last four years from the uh, huge, huge list of items and it was just too big to handle so we pared it down and kept the stuff that was really good. Started smoking a lot of stuff, pastrami, chicken, eggs. I love the specials. It's so much fun to play with different foods and flavors and do all the different specials coming out. I'm a nighttime person. Andrea is a nighttime person. So we're here more than we're at our house. So we invite everyone to come in and just have a good time. All right, Jesse, this is definitely a, a family friendly, casual spot, local neighborhood place, huh? Yeah, absolutely. So we, it was a neighborhood with three pizzerias, um, which no neighborhood probably needs. Andrea and Sean, the owners in 2011, came and took it over and turned it into this kind of family-friendly gastropub. It's not pretentious or super divey, it's kind of that perfect fine line in between. I live in the neighborhood and so, just so happened to be one of my favorite restaurants now. And I so. don't want to say you stumbled in, but you stumbled in, Yeah, right? and you stumble out because of all the beer. So. <laughs> I mean, they have great specials and everything on the menu is great, but you can't go wrong with a burger at Dark Horse. It sounds simple, but the cheese is so melty and the burger is always so tender and the fries served with it are crispy and delicious and seasoned so well. It's hard to do a classic kind of boring dish that well, but they, they managed to do it. It's fantastic. And so I lived in New York for a little while, so I'm always looking for the best pastrami. And so in the Bay Area, there's, you know, not too much going around, but this place was really an awesome pastrami. It was really soft and kind of, it was fatty, but like not too fatty. And they actually, instead of using sauerkraut, they put it with kimchi, kimchi. which I think is a really interesting kind of meld of flavors because it still has that sourness and the spiciness. And it's just like this perfect crunchy bread on top that gives it structure. And it's just, it was delicious and it was complete comfort food. It was so good. Yeah, and did you have a beer with that? Of course, I had a yeah. beer with it. I got the perfect beer and I was so excited about it. It was so delicious. I didn't have the uh, Reuben because uh, I just had one for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although I would, you, you, yeah. you can have two. Um, <laughs> you can have two. But the special was really good. They had a Cuban uh, type sandwich on there, and um, darn good beer selection, fresh. And the wine list is pretty good and pretty well thought out, actually, if you're a wine drinker. And well priced. And well priced. It was kind of busy, so the service might have been a little slow. But uh, all in all, it was a great pub experience. Uh, I had the veggie burger, which you may not know it uh, looking at me, but I'm not normally a veggie burger type of guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You. But uh, their veggie burger is like a black bean and quinoa, and it has feta um, cheese and like this edamame spread on it. The texture is really interesting. It's soft. It's almost like a burger of mashed potatoes. And the flavor is incredible. The feta cheese is kind of the perfect complement to this 
think the key is that it doesn't taste like it's trying to be a burger. It's very much its own thing. I tried the fried um, jalapeno peppers and pickles. So it's house cured pickles, which were amazing. They were kind of batter fried and you can, really can't go wrong with batter fried anything, but these were especially good because the contrast of flavors between the jalapeno peppers and this tart pickles and you kind of dip it into this ranch sauce. I thought they were really amazing. It was a great combination. But because this is elevated gastro, I mean, pub food, right. you know, this I, is... I really like the deviled eggs. Their smoked deviled eggs is what they sell them as, and I kind of thought that that was just like an adjective to sell the egg. But they really, I mean, it's like biting into a rib. They stick up half a piece of bacon, real crispy bacon in there. The portions are a little bit small, but it's kind of perfect if you're about to get this big heaping burger to get this nice little creamy, smoky tree. Tree, right tree before. Oh, uh, we had the deviled eggs too, and... Yeah. Uh, and I like making them, but I never had one with that uh, salty component with the, the bacon and mm -hmm. it sitting right on the top. And what about those fish tacos, Tim? The fish tacos were okay, but I probably ought to stick to fish tacos uh, when I'm in a place that is known for fish tacos. Go with uh, the pastrami. So <laughs> I wanted the, the pastrami, pastrami, and that was the <laughs> thing. Is they thing. stock, uh, it's, I think it's called Not Your Father's Root Beer, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they make a root beer float with it, and it's a classic root beer float, other than the fact that it's um, adult-themed. But it is fantastic. You get the creaminess of the vanilla ice cream and the kind of that little frothy cap that you get on a root beer float. And I think that sometimes you forget how good root beer floats are. Oh, they're so good, aren't they? Right, yeah. but you don't have them, in, well, at least me personally, I don't yeah. have them enough to really appreciate them, and every time they come around, I think, oh, why don't I get more root beer floats? And any other recommendations when people go visit? Make a friend. It was weird because like a lot of people were like strangers were talking to each other at the bar, right. which when does that happen too? Mm -hmm. like, I feel like everyone was just really I friendly. I don't know, I talk to strangers all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a friendly place, like you said. I mean, people are just talking to each other and they'll let you try anything and everyone's willing to talk and the food is great and it's kind of I a great felt place a, to be. a little bit overdressed. Okay. Uh, well, uh, well, you're wearing you go a bow like that? tie, for God's sake. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> but I should have brought my beanie. Yeah, okay. you it's know, a special place. And my like, puffy yeah, jacket yeah. or something. Casual so, or I mean, casual. it was real cash, real mm -hmm. local, real neighborhoody. Fantastic. Well, it's your spot, so wrap it up for us. I think at the price with the service and the food, it's a perfect place for any occasion. Okay, and Kavitha? A friendly neighborhood bar with really good food and an amazing pastrami sandwich. All right, and Tim? I love the neighborhood feel for it. Uh, I need to go back for the Reuben and the root beer float. All right, if you would like to try the Dark Horse Inn, it's located on Geneva Avenue at Mission in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-469-5508. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday with brunch on Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $25. Calistoga. The name evokes images of hot spring spas and spouting geysers, but when it comes to wine, Calistoga is a Napa classic. Though known for centuries as a unique growing region with steep mountain slopes and valley floor vineyards layered with volcanic soil, it was anointed as an American viticultural area in 2010. Anchored by the iconic Chateau Montalena, a winery that drew worldwide attention when its 1973 Chardonnay bested French versions during the Judgment of Paris tasting, today it's home to a range of boutique wineries that has joined its ranks. Reds, particularly Cabernet Sauvignons, are superstars, and the best hail from grapes that soak in the day's heat and chill down during nights influenced by cool coastal air currents. It may be relatively small in size compared to other spots, but Calistoga's luscious wines are grand in stature. Cheers. Created by an iron chef, Tim's modern, energetic, and hyper-cool spot features more than sushi. It takes style and service to a new level, offering contemporary Cal-inspired Japanese cuisine. Overlooking the Napa River in Napa, it's called Morimoto Napa. Chef Morimoto has been at this for many, many years. He started out on the original Iron Chef and then came over to America to do Iron Chef America. We understand what it took to get where he is, so we're incredibly careful because he takes it so seriously. I'm Michael Gallion, General Manager of Morimoto Napa. We utilize local wood. The wood that's in our sushi bar is actually from a reclaimed barn. We also have stripped down 50-year-old Cabernet vines. So you have that tie to the local area while still having that metropolitan feel. Myself and my team here, we're all about the vibe. 
Our head chef is Chef Sean Massey. Chef Sean has brought an amazing energy and vibe to this restaurant. The sushi and sashimi here is flown in 24 hours out of Japan. We get deliveries three days a week. We get deliveries on Sundays here. As far as the sake goes, we're actually the, I believe, the only restaurant in North America to have five certified sake specialists. And they will taste this one. We have an extensive wine list. One thing we do before dinner is they do a chant called the Hanakura Law. It's a way to get the staff pumped up and send them into battle on a high note. Now, Tim, Morimoto is a classic across the country. This is their Napa outlet, and it is really in the heart of wine country, isn't it? Downtown Napa. It's uh, been there several years. This place has been on fire pretty much since the day it opened. And what I like about it is the service is over the top. Uh, there are a lot of more expensive and more famous restaurants you could go to where the service is that way, but this is a little bit more friendly, I think. The right. sushi bar is my personal favorite, right. but when you go with two or three people, you want to be on a table. <laughs> the uh, rock shrimp uh, with the two different styles with the homemade ranch dressing is a go-to uh, type of dish. And then I really like their joza, light, delicate dumplings with a bacon foam around it. He has a way of taking textures of cold and warm and spice. Right. And those. Chef Morimoto is certainly known. He was, you know, the founding chef at Nobu, and he's Iron Chef, and he's famous around the world. And it's his restaurant. Plus, yeah. they do some great renditions, I think, of that spicy crab leg. Oh, it's hot, it's spicy, <laughs> it's crab. I mean, what's not to like? I loved everything I had, but specifically the, the toro tartare, which mm -hmm. was, it seems like a signature dish. The sig dish. In that beautiful palette. Yes. It looks like a painting set, right? Yes, and it's hard to decide if you like the food as much as you like the presentation or <laughs> vice yeah. versa. I mean, it was nothing like I'd ever had before. The taste, the presentation, eating with what looked like the scraper for a, a windshield if you had an icy morning. <laughs> a little tiny car. <laughs> yes. a little tiny car. Yes. At first, I wasn't that interested in going to more because of the big name but you know going there I was super impressed I think it was really amazing I think the presentation is really their strong point I remember the tuna pizza which mm -hmm. is an amazing dish it's like a flour tortilla that's crisped up they put fresh ahi on it and they put the jalapenos and olives and they top it with this amazing anchovy aioli mm -hmm. and just like the combination of flavors is really well balanced lots of tartness and smooth flavors and it just comes together perfectly and it's just an amazing appetizer and what else did you have so we also had that rock shrimp tempura and mm -hmm. actually I wasn't that much of a fan of it. I thought the batter was too thick and it was kind of trying to hide behind the different flavors like the wasabi I thought was too sweet. But I thought overall it was, you know, a nice fried dish to have for an appetizer. It goes with like sake really well. And let's talk about, you know, you mentioned sake, you mentioned wine. Eduardo Dingler, who is the fantastic wine director there, has put together a list of not only sakes but champagnes go beautifully with this kind of cuisine. Mm -hmm. And what other dishes did you have when you were there, Jess? We had a lot of dishes. Um, <laughs> something I really, really liked was the seared halibut. That was my favorite and it had like a Thai kind of curry with it and it was like this nice kind of rich component. It felt very savory and comforting and the, the dish itself was just really high in flavor. I can see you like thinking about it right now. Mm -hmm. Your face is... I know, I just want to be is... back. So I had the um, sea urchin carbonara, and that was a really interesting Asian fusion kind of dish. So it takes the traditional carbonara, and it uses kind of like the cheese and the egg and the creamy, luxurious sauce, and it was really beautiful. Has a little bit of Asian influences with the a soft, squishy sea urchin. My favorite entree is the berry bob, and that is a traditional type of dish where you have a yellowtail, you have some uh, seasoned rice, you have four kinds of veggies. The bowl comes out at 500 degrees and they cook the, the fish on the side of the bowls. Then they put some liquid in it and then they mix it all up together and it, it is their signature dish at that restaurant. There's a dessert there that's just like a, a chocolate bomb. And they put a little uh, rum on it and they light it and you watch the chocolate melt on top. And inside of the bowl, it's like a bomb. Uh, chocolate, bitter, <laughs> sweet. Inside is a, a whipped cream kind of vanilla flavored. And inside that, there's this frozen chocolate gelato. It's and it's just, like a <laughs> bomb. It's like a bomb. Exactly. Very impressive to watch it happen. The intimidating part of this place is the price tag. You want to go and you see the menu and then you want to get everything and then you say, well, maybe one $90 steak is enough for me. Right. I can't. And then that wacky carbaccio. Right? <laughs> right, 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 right. But the service is, is unmatched to me. It is more than just a meal. It is a dining experience. I mean, you get really catered to 
we came in with a kind of a fairly big party and it was like we were the only people there. And what do you feel about oh, that? Oh, I completely agree. So it was amazing wait staff there. And they also look really great. Like uh, all of the waiters were <laughs> incredibly handsome. I'm like, where did they find these people? <laughs> <laughs> it's like all oh, is eye candy. And they are all really knowledgeable and they, you well, know. Well, the food is, uh, is eye candy too. Yeah, yeah, oh my gosh, the food is beautiful. And I think that's right. the real strength of Morimoto's. It was like the most beautiful presentation I've had in a restaurant. Well, that's a good way to wrap it up. So if people want to make this a destination, what do you say to them? Quick summary. Chic, urban, in Napa, tons of great restaurants in that town, but this is an experience that you'll remember. All right, and Kavita? A beautiful restaurant with an emphasis on presentation. And Jesse? If you're willing to, to go for that price tag, you will have an unforgettable dining experience for sure. All right, if you would like to try Morimoto Napa, it's located on Main at 3rd Street in Napa. The telephone number is 707-252-1600. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average tab for dinner without drinks is around $60. I have to thank my great guests on this week's show, Kavitha Rajaram, whose modern Spanish cuisine highlights flavorful shared plates and creative cocktails at Duende in Oakland, Jesse McGrath in the friendly neighborhood beer-centric gastropub, The Dark Horse Inn in San Francisco, and Tim McDonald, whose elegant eatery delivers contemporary Japanese cuisine at Morimoto in Napa. Now we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about, so keep in touch with us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the wines and spirits we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone, and cheers, cheers. to you. Cheers, cheers both of them. Yeah. Cheers, Ooh. cheers. <laughs> <laughs>